Hello, everybody. My name is Mason Neal, and today I'm going to be presenting on in vivo CAR T therapies via receptor targeting vectors. So, first, let's address the problem overall. Traditionally, ex vivo CAR T methods are used for CAR T therapy, which is illustrated by the image here on the right, where you go through leukophoresis, where T lymphocytes or T cells are harvested, they're genetically modified with a CAR gene implemented back into the body via reinfusion to where those patients can then be treated. There's often a conditioning step in between steps one and three that allows for the patient's body to be prepared for the reinfusion step or harvesting step of these cells. And if we look at in vivo methods on the right in comparison, um, it's a much shorter process if we utilize viral vectors with service engineering to target T cells and deliver the CAR gene to the T cells within the body. And a major benefit of this is that it can be used off the shelf. So currently there are no approved in vivo CAR T therapies. These have all been researched in preclinical studies, but there are a couple of approved ex vivo therapeutics. Okay, so looking at surface engineering, uh, this is a quick overview of kind of what we're going to be talking about. Um, pseudotyping, specifically um, designing a viral vector to carry the CAR gene and then target T cell markers such as CD3, 4, 5, and 8. And then um, moving on from there, selectivity is achieved at cell entry, and then the vectors transduce the cell with the target receptors on the surface. So the first step of um, this process is pseudotyping. I'm going to be pretty much covering lentiviral vectors as an example because through the literature that I read, most of them are most of the literature shows that lentiviral vectors seem to be the most promising when they're coupled with SCFVs and DAR pins. And this should say that it has greater than a 95% selectivity in lentiviral vectors. Um, but talking about pseudotyping, pseudotyping is essentially where you replace the native envelope proteins with um, of a viral vector with another virus, and that's crucial for having host specificity, host cell specificity. And some examples here are um, the pseudotype, or excuse me, showing the name in parentheses, and then the pseudotype. Some examples here are showing the virus name in quotations and then pseudotype in parentheses. So for example, um, vascular stomatis virus or VSVG, and then rabies virus, RABVG. From here, SCFVs or DAR pins are engineered to go or be fused to the uh, protein envelope, and that allows them to bind specifically to CAR T cells. And then lentiviral vectors also have a broad orientation that can achieve high transduction in lymphocytes. There's two main things I want to discuss. Is first the um, destroying the natural receptor usage of the virus, and then adding a binder for target recognition. So here is an example showing multiple types of viral vectors. At the top, in example A, you can see a lentiviral vector, where on the left it shows paramyzovirus, and on the right it's showing its pseudotype with alpha virus. And then on the left, it's showing DAR pins being attached, versus on the right, there's a tandem FAB. Looking at image B here, this is another example of a viral vector, an adeno-associated virus with DAR pins attached. And then further down, those are the non-viral vectors that I covered in my paper, which are nanocarriers and lipid nanoparticles. And those are utilizing FAB2 and monoclonal antibodies. Um, something that I do want to mention are DAR pins. So these are designed and chiron repeat proteins, which are a class of synthetic proteins that are engineered for specific binding tasks. So they do have a very high specificity. And then some other things that I mentioned below are SCFBs, tandem FABs, and MABs, which we have discussed in this class. And this is just a pseudotyping overview. I just wanted to highlight the natural cell tropism here for each of the original viruses and pseudotypes associated, just to quickly highlight that. Okay, so here is kind of bringing all of this together. So we have a lentiviral vector with our CAR gene or carrying the CAR gene, that um, is then taken with, if you look at this binding protein here on the lentiviral vector, so those DAR pins are then fused to that binding protein, and that essentially ablates the natural receptor binding point, and that's indicated by this red X here, and that's essentially just taking this receptor, it's now saying that, hey, this DAR pin is going to bind to specifically to 
uh, a marker on this T cell, which are the previous ones that I mentioned, um, CD8, CD4, and others. And then ultimately what happens is when the lentiviral vector does target the T cell, it develops a CAR T cell with a chimeric antigen receptor that will ultimately tell the tumor cell to be killed. And then further along in my research, I looked at combining cell surface engineering with a small molecule drug known as rapamycin. So this is um, an interesting study that I found where they were looking at if this particular uh, small molecule drug could help this bypass cell and syndrome barrier. So lentiviral vectors are pseudotyped with the vescular somatis VSV glycoprotein and the low density lipoprotein receptor is the entry receptor for VSV and it's expressed in all human cell types except for unstimulated T lymphocytes, so ones that are resting. And then in vivo car administration is not possible using VSV LV because um, that's where the SCFVs and DARK pins come into place um, for fusion proteins to mediate membrane fusion and release of the genetic complexes. So VSVLV uses a pH-dependent endosomal pathway, and lentiviral vectors pseudotype with paramizovirus envelope proteins like CD4LV and CD8LV. They fuse directly with the cellular membrane and deliver their genetic payload in a pH-independent manner. And lentiviral vectors have an HIV origin, making them immunodeficient, and they have to bypass cell and citric barriers that can affect the route of integration and transgene expression. So researchers wanted to see if this small molecule drug could help with that. And specifically, they looked at um, MTOR inhibition. So rapamycin, the small mo molecule drug at hand here, it inhibits mammalian target of rapamycin protein, or the MTOR, and that blocks MTOR signaling that significantly lowers tumor cell growth and uh, proliferation. Okay, so the biggest thing that I want to cover here is that during um, this study when they found transcriptomic difference, differences between CAR positive and CAR negative ex cells exposed to different vectors, um, they uncovered that significant genes and pathways with CAR expression um, were known for inhibiting viral entry pathways. So these were IFIT, M1, 2, and 3. I didn't want to mention these briefly. So IFIT, M1, 2, and 3 are interferon-induced transmembrane proteins, and they are released in response to viral infections, which work very well whenever you want your body to fight off something that's harmful. But whenever we're using viral vectors as a means for transporting something beneficial into the body, uh, these can be a bit of a problem. So further along, flow cytometry analysis of the CAR T cells generated with the CD8, CD4, or VSV, LV was performed with or without rapamycin. And it revealed that there were significant increases in CAR positive cells, particularly with CD8, LV, and CD4, LV where rapamycin was introduced. They also saw reduced IFITM proteins and increased gene delivery and T-cell conversion into tar CAR T-cells, uh, specifically with the CD8 LV. And then looking further along, they actually performed experiments in humanized mice, and they noticed that there was an increase in CAR T-cell numbers and reduced uh, tumor burden overall within the mice that were treated with it. And then here is just a highlight of the different types of vectors used for in vivo CAR T that I found in the literature. Um, lentiviral vectors are seen on the top left. Those would be compared with the AVs or adeno associated viruses. And then the two non viral vectors are listed on the right, so nanocarriers and lipid nanoparticles. Last thing that I want to discuss is target antigen selection and tumor specific antigens. Ultimately, just finding um, greater tumor-specific antigens, which are a subset of target antigen selection, um, could yield antigens that are unique to tumor types that would ultimately enhance uh, specificity, efficacy, safety, and long-term control, as well as tumor heterogeneity. And then finally, my recommendations would be to pursue lentiviral vectors since they do appear to be the most promising with their specificity when they're coupled with DARPINs. I would couple that with the rapamycin small molecule drug, as well as any other 
small molecule drugs that are currently out there for cancer research or cancer treatments um, and seeing how those could be used to optimize this therapeutic and run further experiments to see how it could potentially be more honed in. And then also just performing greater research around tumor specific antigens to highlight ones that can be targeted in a way that would result in less um, non-target effects on normal tissue. And I think that's all that I have. Thank you so much for listening.